Just listen to these statistics, they're really fantastic. Geely sold a total of 1.68 million vehicles last year, and they had an increase of 48% from 2022 to 2023. So they're not a small company at all, you can't really ignore them. And they also own a few brands, obviously, like Volvo and Polestar. Uh, BYD sold 3 million vehicles last year, they're now on track to sell 4 million vehicles this year. Uh, not all EVs, of, of course, there's some petrols and hybrids and stuff in there. Uh, Toyota sold 11 million vehicles globally, of all the of all types. And globally, there are 92 million vehicle sales, or there were 92 million vehicle sales last year, 2023. Uh, so just to give you a bit of perspective on market size, you know, these play these are big players, these are the the people that are making up that 92 million. Just listen to these statistics, they're really fantastic. Geely sold a total of 1.68 million vehicles last year. That's obviously Volvo and Polestar and other brands. They had an increase of uh, 48% from 2022 to 2023 in growth in how many vehicles they sold. So they're not a small company to ignore, you can't really ignore that. BYD sold almost double, they sold 3 million vehicles, they're now on track to sell 4 million this year. 11 million from Toyota. Uh, the global market for uh, all vehicles combined, 2023, 92 million vehicles sold in a year. Uh, so just to give you a bit of perspective on the market size, really, 14 million of those 92 million cars were full EVs. And that was a rise of 35% from 2022. So if you look at the price and most of the metrics here for the Geely Galaxy E5 and also the BYD Atto 3, the Geely pretty much wins in most metrics. I'm not saying it's the one I'd buy, I'd probably just go with BYD uh, because it's vetted. Basically, BYD vehicles are vetted, as are Toyotas and Hondas, obviously. They're well-made cars. Uh, there is a noticeable difference in the quality, in my opinion, uh, when you go and look at a Geely and you go and consider a BYD as well, there's a quality that the BYD has that the Geely just doesn't have. They're always better quality. You can just tell quite quickly within a minute, you'll know. I think the new Geely Galaxy E5 is uh, quite possibly the most significant EV to come out that competes with the Tesla Model Y after the Atto 3. I think this is that third car now. Uh, if, the look of it is pretty great. The specs, fantastic. Price is decent. Will it come to the UK? Will it come to Europe? I think that's a good question to ask. I don't really know. I'd like to think so. Uh, the price is one of the best parts about it, I think. 16 to 21,000 US dollars in the domestic market, China, where it's made. So, I don't know, stick uh, stick a lot on that. Probably almost double it uh, is the price you pay as a consumer here. But for what you get, it's brilliant. The EU tariff as well could have been worse for Geely. Uh, the tariff Geely receives was basically 20%, which goes on to the usual, on top of the usual 10% that they, they would have. Uh, so it's 30% tax on that. It's still a, a, a car at that price, I think, that people will buy even after the tariff. So they're, they're, they're probably a little bit lucky in that regard. Uh, premium models offer up to 16 speakers, including speakers in the headrests, which is pretty quirky. Uh, the, also, it features the new system. It's like an auto system, kind of like Android Auto, that sort of thing. But it's called Flyme, and it's designed by Geely, and it's meant to be really intuitive as a, kind of like a smartphone. Uh, it is powered as well by China's Dragon Eagle One 7 nanometer CPU. Uh, Geely also introduced uh, innov in innovative, innovative hidden door handle technology that promises uh, really reliable operation even in extreme heat and extreme cold, so that they they're not supposed to lock up and freeze up on you when it's minus 20 and you're in you know Oslo or something. Uh, so they plan to also share that technology with the industry, which is pretty nice. Whatever they're doing, I'm interested to know about it. I actually don't know much about it. Uh, it measures 4.6 meters in length and 1.9 meters in width, 1.67 meters in height, uh, with a wheelbase of 2.75 meters. And interestingly, this is a quirky statistic, 1.6 ton. That's all it weighs, 1.6 ton uh, for cars comparable to, uh, to it, like the Atto 3 or, I don't know... Um, uh, there's a load of brands these days that sell a car the same size, but they weigh over two ton. So that's 400 kilos lighter. Uh, for comparison as well, B that's the same weight, roughly, as the BYD Dolphin, which I think is uh, just crazy. And that's a small hatchback, really, an actual small hatchback, not like the Cooper Bourne, where it's like 15% larger than a hatchback. It is just a hatchback. Uh, so it's powered by a single motor at the front, and that has uh, 160 kilowatts or 215 horsepower. 
320 newton meters of torque, really standard front wheel drive, you know, statistics these days uh, for a lot of cars. It can do 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.9 seconds, and it also offers two uh, battery configurations. It has 49 and a half kilowatt hours and 60.2 kilowatt hours. And that gives you a range of 440 kilometers or 530 kilometers respectively. Uh, knock 30% off that, and that's probably what you'll get in Europe, WLTP, if you were to drive efficiently. Uh, so, you know, 350 kilometers, 400 kilometers, something like that. Again, I mean, that's predictable, really. Uh, it's It features 33 storage compartments, so it's made for people like me who like really practical cars where the seats go completely flat and load of storage. Um, yeah, uh, 33 storage compartments claim to be the best in class. I don't know. I, I, I spend my time looking at data like this, but I'm not actually going to go check that out. Uh, I hope you don't mind. Uh, this includes extra drawers as well underneath the rare air vents and uh, another one be uh, below the rare seats. Uh, the Galaxy E5 as well will be available in eight colours. It will be uh, red, pink, grey, green, white, silver, black and blue as well. And that will be available early 2025 and other models from the Geely Galaxy range as well. You've got the L7, the L6, both really, really nice. They'll re receive an upgrade to the Meizu Flyme Auto via over-the-air updates, basically. So you, if you own that car, your computer's probably going to change crazily and it'll look totally different, which it really does. Uh, it was designed as well to ri rival the Atto 3, which seems fairly obvious. You can see it's basically the same sort of car, but cheaper, and it's Geely, so it's probably a little bit less quality. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you think it looks better or worse, let me know. What do you think about the statistics? I think it's pretty beige. Literally, even the marketing car is often beige in the photos. But it's just a bit, you know, it's all right. It's just an all right car for a reasonable price. That's what excites me about this. Kind of like the Atto 3. Nothing too mental and fancy and expensive. It's just a decent car for a decent price. Even though the quality on Geely is a little bit less than BYD. It's much of a muchness, really. Uh, Fiat make you know, some half-decent cars, kind of, unless you consider the electronics failing all the time. Uh, but the quality is a bit less on those than it is on a Toyota. But it is all right. There's a place for that in, in society, especially if it's a bit cheaper, I think. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I'm Ben Alexander, and I make these uh, EV news videos very often. Oh, it's supposed to be every day, although I'm not doing it every day at the minute. And um, I've just had to book tickets to go back to uh, Australia for a little while, to renovate the house, basically, which is now sat there in Australia, it needs to be renovated majorly, majorly renovated. I don't know if you're interested in seeing any pictures or videos or anything. Uh, let me know if you want to see any any little snippets of that. I can put some little snippets at the end of my videos about the house renovation stuff. I don't really know if anyone cares, but maybe you do. Maybe you do. I won't presume you will. Uh, but there's just an insane amount to do on every single room, the top, the bottom, all the walls in every room, the whole outside of the house, the roof and the garden and the whole thing needs to be renovated so I've got to do that and then back to Europe basically so yeah let me know what you think thanks for watching remember to subscribe if you're not subscribed already that'd be really nice I'm someone said the other day good luck getting to 10,000 subscribers well done your channel's grown quite a bit 7,000 subscribers now it's pretty cool and uh, I remember when it was just you know a few hundred and then a thousand and then two thousand and three seven thousand that's crazy so ten thousand is the next goal so if you could help make that happen, that'd be nifty. Thank you very much.